Nobody was the center of Fight Club except the two men fighting. The funny thing about Fight Club is it's such a complicated script and it takes a while to understand exactly what you want to say about it. I think overwhelming was was the original thought when I read that script, like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? It can be interpreted a lot of different ways. Something on your mind, do you? No. There's a simple car crash scene in the movie when uh, Brad tells Ed to let go when they're driving in the car. That scene, you know, when you read the script, you, you think about how you're going to accomplish something like that. It's at night, they're driving, they're having this long conversation, it's raining kind of outside, the car flips and rolls over and you're like, ooh, that's gonna be a big night or something. That was like two weeks of shooting because it was an array of different approaches to accomplish that. For example, I think we crashed that car three or four times, then we shot roads, then we shot background plates for it, then we built a half car that we could put on a gimbal so that it could rotate around when they're in the car and they're tumbling over. Then we built a roadside embankment on stage and the car slid to the last part and they climb out. Your initial reading of it is like, oh, that's gonna be a complicated one. Oh, you gotta start processing all these things and figuring out solutions. But it's so interpretive because there's so many ways to do that. I mean, you could do that with a car, a camera mounted in the car and drive it over with stuntmen and doubles and, and do it that way. Or you could do it the way that, that we eventually broke it out to do it. And you know with David, it's not gonna be that simple. It's gonna be a, a unique perspective to it with elements that get you more involved and engaged in, in whatever it is that's happening. He really comes from the Hitchcock school of filmmaking. And by that, I mean, you make the film before you start shooting. You do all the homework, you do as much research, you do as much problem solving, so that when those problems happen, which inevitably do on every movie, you're more prepared to handle them and there's answers to solve them and you, you keep moving forward, right? However, he's very open-minded in this. If you have a better idea, if you have a solution, you have to prove it to them that that's the way to do it. And so you find your language or your voice, I should say, within that, you know, because he's a very, very bright filmmaker, you know, very bright guy. And so there's nothing that hasn't been thought of, but not everything is, is locked and sealed. So that's where I arrived because there was some structure, but that within that structure, I could add so much to it. And that's part of the collaboration for me that I love, I love the most in, in making films, you know. Can I stay at your place? Yeah. Thanks. Going through that script, I noticed there was a lot of nights, which which is good and bad because nights are wonderful from a cinematographer standpoint. Because yes, you have to you have to sometimes do large areas, but also you don't have to deal with the moving sun and clouds and weather and all that stuff. And the scale of it was huge for me because I I had done fifteen movies as twenty movies as an assistant, but this was was scheduled for one hundred and twelve or one hundred and fifteen days, and we went one hundred and thirty two days. So that's a lot of shooting days. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. The script itself is going to dictate to you at least initially what it wants to be. And then you get, you know, personal visions involved in that, what it, what it is or how it evolves. But for Fight Club, you know, it was the story of these guys that were irreverent and bucking the systems like little rebels. At the time, there was a great product campaign going where they used very little fill and, 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 the, and the images were fairly monochromatic, but really rich and beautiful. And so we, we looked at some of these things and, and we referenced other movies. But then at the same time, there's, there's scenes that take place at night and uh, David would talk about, imagine if you're stoned at, at 12 o'clock at night and you walk into a 7-Eleven or a mini mart and the overhead lights are so bright and so overwhelming. And so, you know, on one hand, for me, I was like, uh, God, the, the Prada stuff is so dark and so rich and falls off so quickly that you really lose perspective of an environment you're in. And it's all about the people, which is a wonderful way of getting conversations and intention. And then these bright, overlit, ugly in a way, but beautifully ugly convenience stores and those kind of things. And, and the two juxtaposed, oh, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. That seems odd to me. But as we got into it, I completely understood. And there's still beauty in all that. It's just how, how you approach it. So we took reality and just 
offset it a little bit for those movies and added a lot of contrast because there was a lot of tension. But again, it's a lot of dialogue going on. There's a lot of short scenes in that movie that take place. And so there's a rhythm and a cadence to it. And so you have to stay within that. It had the most opportunities for pushing the boundaries technically that you hadn't seen before. For example, when his subliminal flashbacks or when he takes the camera and shakes it and we stabilize the, the image, so that the, in order to stabilize the image, you have to track the film and the film tracks all the way to the perfs on both sides. You know, you watch David's movies and you think that they're all perverse and dark and murder. And the thing is, when you go back and you analyze them, those are all suggestions. You rarely ever see any of that. You know, you don't see that. It's not there. It's just suggested. He's so good at that, that we perceive that in our heads. And that's the walk away. There's quite a few tricks in that film that that uh, had not been done before or, or we hadn't seen in the context of a, of a large feature like that.